So hi and welcome to the season 2 of the You the Future Youth podcast. You know, thank you so much for tuning in with us tuning in with us today. We hope to serve you to the highest. So Jim Rohn said, "Take care of your body because it's the only place that you have to live in." So today we have with us who works in the field of making our bodies better and similarly making our minds better here at Shravani. All right. Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Shravani Sansare. I am a certified personal trainer and sports nutrition specialist from the National Council on Strength and Fitness (NCSF). And uh, I am currently an entrepreneur. I am working with a team of two other people. We are a bunch of coaches who train people online to transform their lives. So yeah, that's a little bit of an intro about me. Uh-huh. Amazing, amazing. So okay, so beginning with you know being strong is amazing, but rising up from a dark space and building yourself up is pretty cool and that is something that is you know very insightful and amazing so when we talked the last time you told about the dark space that you were in and how did you came out of it so do you have a story about the same yeah i mean um, i would say about 4 years ago is when i personally started really working out seriously uh, regularly and Uh, the reason i started was because i was in a very toxic environment i was people who you know i thought were my friends but they weren't really there was a lot of um, there was a lot of bullying going on which ultimately led me to having a very low self esteem and uh, day after day it just kept getting worse at one point my father who's always been into sports and fitness he picked me up um, he he woke me up at about 6 in the morning and he said get uh, get up and come with me to the gym Okay. And uh, that's it there was no turning back from there you know i i really didn't think that it would end up getting me this far but my the gym became my escape amazing amazing okay wow so, yeah that's so cool you know and because even we are people who actually focus a lot on our fitness because we really value our bodies because after all like i said you that the only place that you have to live in so okay. you need to take care of your body So you know now going to the second question you know all success is built up some sum- surmounted by the negative experience we have around our goal and then we reach a time when we say enough i'm going to get out of this what was this disappointing part of your story all right so uh, i would say last year i was pursuing my masters and uh, in that short sp- span of a year i put on about 8 to 9 kgs which is a lot for someone who's as tiny as i am i am 51 for anyone who's wondering so um at that point uh, like i heard a lot of people say nasty things about me not directly to my face most of them was behind my back but you know i heard it from my friends and um they stopped looking at me as a credible source of fitness um but there was this one person who who was trying to maybe share my instagram story with another friend of hers and she was trying to say something about it but she ended up replying to that story instead so i got the message and it wasn't a nice one right so i think that was the point that really um something in me just snapped and i said you know what i've i've got to get control i've got to take control of this i can either sulk about it and let things get worse from this point or i can just put in effort day after day and maybe a year from now i'll be in a better place okay right, right. amazing um going <laughs> out when you became a fitness trainer so what is that story of yours like you know why did you specifically go into fitness training okay um so i think when i started out i was very um very confused you know as as anyone is the gym is a very overwhelming place especially for someone who's just starting out you know you walk into a gym everyone looks like they've got everything figured out they know what they're doing and you are absolutely lost right so i faced a similar experience it becomes a bit intimidating and over time i gained this um, sort of an interest in understanding the science behind fitness mm-hmm. and also having been on both sides of the scale i know how society treats you differently when you don't look like a socially acceptable size this takes a big toll like on your mental health and your happiness but apart from the aesthetics obviously the health and performance components of fitness cannot be um, neglected it's crucial to a long illness free life correct so i wanted to be correct. in a place wherein i could help other people achieve their goals without falling for the scams that are going on in the fitness industry today okay so what kind of scams are you talking about so i'm pretty sure you guys may have seen things like 
two weeks do this workout for two weeks you're going to get abs or yeah, yeah. you know drink this particular green thing for a month and you will lose 10 kg things like this the promises that people make on social media these days are things that you know they can't even be held liable for because they're not qualified in the industry and they'll just blame you you know they'll say that no one asked you to take our advice but there's so much misinformation going on in the industry that people really need to be aware of what's right and what's wrong and i'm trying to do my part in that that's okay. amazing you that's okay. so, so great basically you are trying to create awareness and you know better awareness about fitness and stuff but on the other hand of the story you are a computer engineer and an mba uh, graduate right mm-hmm. so why did you choose so much different fields like computer engineering then mba and some then something that is not related to both of it yeah okay so i think engineering came to me almost as a norm at the age of 18 okay so when you're just done with 12th standard right in india at least i think this is still going on where there are only 3 4 uh, sort of acceptable lines of a career that you can opt for right so you've got medical you've got engineering you you can become a ca you can do law so these are the the broadly the four categories that even i knew of and i was inclined most towards engineering my primary interest actually laid in aerospace and aeronautics but um when i had this conversation with my parents you know they all obviously had this thinking that computer engineering is like the future it's like a never dying field which i mean in their own place they are they are right so i i went for comp and very soon i think by second year i realized that i was like a fish out of water i was in the wrong place um i just i wasn't performing well i wasn't feeling good i didn't like it at all so pursuing a master's degree was always on my mind it's it's always you know one of those goals that i sort of set for myself to achieve in life but because halfway through engineering i realized that ms is not for me and for me as a person uh i i sort of felt that an mba would be better suited and would yield more fruits in the future i started having this sort of uh, an incline towards business and that's why i opted for an mba in e business so that's also a relatively new field that's come up because usually you've got an mba in uh, marketing you've got finance you've got supply chain but e business is something that was relatively new and that's why i opted for that fitness was a passion that started in my second year of engineering but by my final year it became a bit of an obsession and during my masters after i learned about business it just you know took it to the next level that's when i decided hey you know what i want to start something of my own in the fitness industry <laughs> amazing amazing so wow. talking about this complete uh, career choice thing a lot of people go for engineering without even liking it so what do you have to say about that like you know in india it is a huge problem that because of parental and societal expectations people go exactly yeah you know in in india it's like you can be in some families it's like you can be a doctor and engineer or a failure yeah in some families it's that yes. conservative and you yeah. know a lot of time we see this but we can't do about it because kids to do well they even say anything about that because they think this was those are the only fields which will yield them results but it's not true That's so not what do you have to say about choosing something different and standing up for yourself hmm. i think you know i i must say that ever since i've you know gone through that phase i think it's been about 6 years since i was in 12th but i feel like people are also changing i think unconventional um you know uh, what do you call it like unconventional job roles are coming up people are actually stepping out of their comfort zones which is a great thing that i've seen in the youth these days but all i want to say is if you are 18 years old and you don't have things figured out that's fine and that's normal when i was 18 i didn't know what the hell i wanted to do i really didn't and that's that's okay but if somebody feels like you know they're being pressurized to to pick up a um, a certain sort of t- field of education then i think also from your side you need to be able to put up a good argument even in front of your parents right if they are telling you that hey um i feel like this particular degree is going to be the best for you in terms of of a, of a bright future if you don't want to do that you you should be able to at least put something on the table where you can explain hey you know what but i have an interest i have a passion for something else and this is my plan and this is what i'm going to do to make it work i parents are not your enemies guys and i know that when you're 17 18 you know you have this whole rebellious phase where you feel like oh no no one's listening to me but i feel like back then i myself i was so immature right like if i didn't want to do something 
that's that's one thing but putting forward what you want to do and how you're going to achieve it is going to be important sit down with your family have a conversation i feel like more often than not if you have a good plan there's no reason why they won't support you right amazing pretty amazing so he is you know not rejecting their plan but replacing their plan with your own plan which exactly which, which yeah. you will enjoy in the long term yeah yeah you know amazing exactly yeah. you know a lot of times what happens is like at yeah at our age people don't have anything figured out and what they do is like they basically like they don't have anything figured out and they just argue with their parents whenever they tell them to do something whether they have anything figured out or no Correct. so what like do you have anything to suggest to them hmm i think there needs to be a certain amount of time that you spend with yourself um up, you know away from your friends your family you really need to it sounds very cliche okay but it's really when you sit down with yourself and ask yourself what is it that i love doing okay that's one thing then it comes to what are you good at correct so if you if what you are doing is what you are good at the next thing you have to think about is okay how is this going to make me money is it possible for me to turn this into a career option correct that is when you know your the, the wheels in your brain are just going to start working and you're going to start coming up with a plan but this requires you to really sit down and take that time for yourself even if it's once a week but if you don't do it at all it's never going to strike you overnight you're never going to like suddenly wake up some day and be like oh this is what i want to do in life it's a yeah. process well, it's not an act completely impulsive decision exactly and something clicked when you talk you when you were talking about that sir was is that ikigai yes <laughs> yep. gotcha <laughs> i think that's a book that everyone must read uh, it absolutely cool. it's a game changer the, the way the book goes is good yeah mm-hmm. Yeah so definitely another advice would be to read non fiction books and read these things that that really you know get your <laughs> get your mind working yeah so insightful. that's important yeah that thank you very much yeah you know, we always recommend these three books yeah yeah we always recommend these three books it's like think and grow rich it's uh, the power of your subconscious mind and it's and it's the rich dad poor dad series ah uh, yes absolutely yeah. Yeah. agreed yeah okay so Well, uh, basically, out out of this complete thing, you started a business in the fitness industry, which is called Meraki. Mm-hmm. So, what does Meraki the word means? All right. So, Meraki is a Greek word that translates to putting a piece of your heart and your soul into whatever you do. Mm-hmm. Um. So, I believe like it's it's super important for all of us to really live our lives. Right. It's not just about existing. It's not just about going. through your day doing the tasks that you have to do just because you need to do them it's it's really being able to put 100% into whatever you do because i believe that when you put in everything you've got you can achieve wonders so for example like you if you're at work create the best quality report that you're capable of and you'll find success in your corporate job if you're at the gym you know have a laser focus and really kill that workout your body and your mind is going to reward you for it So yeah. similarly when it came to us so Meraki is founded by three of us actually so myself my and my two other business partners Tarun and Maniza so for all of us starting this business was really like putting a piece of our heart into it because it's something that we've always wanted to do but like you know many people the thought of starting a business comes to their head but not many people actually act on it so when we finally did this was the one word that really struck struck a chord yeah. uh-huh. amazing pretty cool pretty cool so you know basically when we are talking about starting a business it is a lot about it is a lot about innovation i'd say mm. and mm. online fitness is a completely new field so what do you have to say about innovation in business and specifically building something new that has never existed like online fitness okay um definitely i think i agree with you innovation is key because if what you are providing is you know like what's what anyone else is is doing then what's your selling point right mm-hmm. so i think in when it comes to online fitness i think it's been around for a few years actually but um so my my business partner tarun actually he's been a coach for about 3 years longer than i have and you know i've seen his struggles wherein he would create excel sheets with with the workout programs with the diet plans and he'd send it out to his clients 
but it made it very tedious and also it became very difficult to sort of keep keep an eye on the clients or hold them accountable because you've just sent out a document right it's only and you can't really call so many people every single day so it only happened that after like a week or two they would get back and they'd be like hey you know i fell off the wagon this happened that happened and then it got very frustrating right. so we realized that having a personal trainer in your pocket makes it so much more accessible for the client and the trainer to not only hold you accountable but to constantly check on you check up on you check up on your progress it just became so much easier so this idea struck and um, yeah meraki was born yeah you know, that's great you know uh, how has how, how have you utilized the lockdown and the quarantine period how have i used it well i personally i have to say it it almost came as a blessing in disguise i know all of us have been struggling with with staying home it's been over 6 months uh, that none of us have gone out but again you know it comes down to your mindset i think when the lockdown started for me number one was i was on this um, fitness journey of my own i'd put on so much weight and i was on this mission to you know get get to the fittest self that i could over over the time i had and apart from that i went ahead and i got my fitness certifications so i actually became a coach i'm a very new coach uh, i had just got my certifications in june and soon after that within like a couple of weeks i started coaching people right so i think over the past 6 months there has been a lot of personal growth because of that effort that i put in every single day and i'm continuing to do so right that's great you know so like yeah in a previous episode tanish had mentioned that if you come out of this lockdown without any skills or any new assets you you didn't lack time you lack discipline yeah so i absolutely agree with that yeah. yeah and so now you know moving to the next question mm-hmm. you know um, starting a business and building is not easy you know tell us about the struggles you've had with this and how progress and happiness is in overcoming these problems okay um so as i said before right i think this idea of i want to have a business someday is something that has crossed my mind and my partner's minds um of uh, several times throughout our mba but we never really knew when it was going to shape into reality so the the conversation that i initiated i remember way back in march was hey you know why don't we do a little bit of market research and uh, initiate this sort of a project almost like those that you do in an, in a typical mba uh, that's all that's all i sort of spoke to my partners about and um, that's where we started off so we never started it by saying oh we are going to register a company it's only fast forward 2 months later where you know things just started sort of rolling and falling into place that we we decided hey you know what i think it's time so that was where we initiated the registration process but before that i think the biggest struggle we've had is um, was deciding the name i think we went to and fro so many different names like i think that was probably the hardest part because i feel like the name of your of your company really defines your brand it it really says who you stand for so that was a struggle for sure and uh, the process itself the registration process is such a long tedious one with tons of documents required and plus in this covid situation you know things are just running a bit slow so that that was a bit frustrating but um, the whole point is when you do get your company registered the happiness is something i can't even express you know that's the point where you go like oh shit is getting real you know like like that that just really charges you fuels you up to do more basic basic so basically going with the journey slowly and making progress is what keeps you going on the complete yeah right yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. amazing so about this complete fitness online fitness thing what is your personal story behind this what is your what are your personal driving emotions about this so as i said right i've been body shamed a lot um back back when i was about 17 years old where i where and i thought i was in perfectly normal shape you know i thought i i looked fine i i was never super like conscious about how i looked but at the age of 17 when when you hear people around you say things about your body uh, it's a very young impressionable age correct so it took such a massive toll on my confidence and it made me conscious about problems that didn't even exist it's just my mind started creating problems right and so that became like my driving force behind starting like my that kick started my fitness journey but that wasn't enough 
once I got into it, it's when I started feeling these endorphins after each workout or, or, you know, the feeling of invincibility when I would set like a new personal record at the gym with every passing session, that is what kept me going. And also I've, apart from, you know, working out at the gym, I've been a sports person and a dancer all my life. And I realized that the, you know, what I was doing at the gym was yielding me good results in, in the sport I was playing or when I was dancing on stage. So it, it actually helped me shine brighter in these areas of my life as well. Plus my energy levels were higher. I was more confident. I was getting more done. So for me, the, I just want people to see fitness as an escape from the daily stresses that we endure in our lives. Like far too many people see fitness as an added stress, but I would like to argue that it's a you stress, not a distress, which means it's basically a positive form of stress. And yeah, I just... I just hope more people sort of get that message. Wow, that's so good. You know, because I do that every time because whenever I have something on my mind or something like which is bothering me, mm-hmm. I just go to work out and I work out that much harder. Exactly. <laughs> because, yeah. Yeah, because I see myself in a completely new light then. Mm. You know, and coming from a person who was actually a little bit chubby in back, back in the day, I was like, uh, even I was kind of body shamed and I was talked about a lot Uh because I was like not in the shape that I was deemed to be and yeah so what happened yeah and it's really it's really it takes a toll on your confidence but once you go out and once you work out you see what's been missing every time Uh and you you see actually the growth in yourself which is so self-fulfilling and it just fills me up every time exactly so yeah this this is great like now, um, if, since we're on this topic, you know, like talking about body shaming, like how do you think are the unrealistic fitness standards shaping youth with the wrong mindset? So how is this affecting their mental health? What do you think? Okay. I think social media has a big part to play in this because everything's too perfect on social media. Correct. So people have started believing that fitness is being shredded to the bone all year round, you know, having washboard abs, a very low body fat percentage. And they've started believing that these people who are ultra fit, who you see on social media, eat nothing but green stuff, salads, smoothies all year round. Um, and they, they start believing that getting rid of all the treats, all the wonderful treats you have out there, just completely eradicating that from your diet is like the only way you can achieve your fitness goals. Secondly, I feel like influencers are to blame as well. So when it comes to fitness, right, there are quite a few roles that you can play in the industry. You can be an influencer. An influencer is somebody who motivates people to work out, correct? But the problem is influencers have started taking on the role of a coach without the qualification required to do that. So now this is very dangerous because people will look at an influencer, look at their bodies and believe, hey, you know, this person's in great shape. They probably know what they're doing. And that's what that's who they hold credible rather than looking into say the certifications of somebody or whether you know their claims are backed with science it's the aesthetics that's sort of driving the youth which is something that you know i'd like to urge against that please please don't believe that fitness enthusiasts or influencers have the knowledge to guide you correctly in your journey if you see them promising things like you know a two week program a one month program that will help you drop x amount of weight achieve a flat stomach etc They're giving you what you want to hear. If these things, if these shortcuts were possible, wouldn't all of us be super fit? Wouldn't all of us be mindlessly eating throughout the year and only maybe, you know, do a cut for two weeks before someone's wedding or someone's birthday? It doesn't make sense, right? These things, even bodybuilders take about 12 weeks. They have a 12 week cut to get to that very low body fat percentage for their stage, you know, for their show. So two weeks, one month, it's, it's absolute rubbish. What happens is um, this leaves people feeling very demotivated because they feel like they need to do extreme things in order to look a certain way. Uh, and it makes them accept that, you know what, maybe fitness is not for me. Like I can't do all this. Um, and other people are driven by this incorrect path and then end up taking extreme measures to drop weight quickly. And then when they don't see the results, they expect they lose hope. And that again takes a toll on your mental health. So I think who you follow in this industry is very, very, very important, guys. So please be careful with that. So 
I want to ask you this one small question, like how do you define fitness? Because, okay. you know, for a lot of people, it is about a good way of looking. For, a, for personally me, it is about a good level of energy. For someone, it is about having, you know, a good kind of specific muscle. So how do you, how do you define, how do you personally define fitness? Okay, so fitness for me is centered around what my body can do rather than what my body looks like. I think what your body looks like is just a byproduct of what you do, of the work that you put in. That's all. So it is all about having high energy levels, right? Yeah. Or, you know, for me, my goals personally, the day I managed to do a pistol squad, I was like, you know what? That made me so, so happy. Like, I don't feel like if I ever see a a defined six pack, I'm going to have that level of happiness because that strength, I know it's been... You know, it's been four years of constantly training at the gym where finally I'm able to do a set of pistol squats. For me, my next goal could be something like pull-ups. It's something that I still can't do. So yeah. setting my goals and linking them to strength goals rather than aesthetic goals ha- really fuels me to do more. Right, right. So it is all about strength for fitness, right? Yeah, for me, yeah. <laughs> Amazing. Mm. So Exactly. Uh, uh, yeah, you know, there's one more question which I'd love to ask you, which is like, what are some of the fitness myths that people believe in. Oh my God. If I get started on this, we could be going on for two hours. <laughs> in fact, let, let me ask you that. Let, let me ask you what's the most ridiculous Supported. thing you have heard about the fitness industry and I can bust that for you. Um, There's going to yeah, be something. Think about you know, I've tried like, uh, yeah, yeah I have, I've seen that you just have to put on, you just have to take more weight. And like, if you're doing a particular exercise, mm-hmm. the taking of the weight is more important than the form. Oh. Like when I wasn't going to the gym and I wasn't working out and everything, the, the people like I used to hang out with my friends and everyone. And one of them told me that, you know, uh, if, you're, if you're doing a squat, you just need to enhance the weight. No, no, it, there's no problem. Even if your knee goes beyond your toes or anything, it's okay. You just keep adding more weight because it's all about going down and coming up. There's no like oh no God. particular form or anything. Bro science everywhere. Um, anyway, I think first of all, I'd like to clarify that, okay, knees crossing your toes, right? It's, uh, that's a very like standard sort of thing that you say when you're teaching someone a squat, just to ensure that they really sit back into their squat. But again, depending on how the person is built, sometimes they can't help but have their knees go overboard. Okay, so that is one thing. But form overweight, like th- there's, that's not negotiable at all. You'll end up injuring yourself, correct? And People don't even realize that there are five different ways you can train at the gym for a specific goal. So everyone just talks about, oh, I want to grow muscle, but they don't know what hypertrophy is. They don't know. Okay, so hypertrophy is basically what growth of muscle is. They don't know the rep ranges that's required to sort of grow your muscle. Everyone just gives you three into 12, three sets of 12. But if you ever ask a coach, why are you giving me three sets of 12 for everything? They probably won't be able to answer you. Start asking questions, ask them, okay, if it's three sets of 12, what should my load be? You know, how much of my one rep max should I be lifting? Because when it comes to hypertrophy, there is a certain range that you go for, okay, in terms of your weight. When it comes to strength, your weight is really, really high. Your load is super high. When it comes to power also, it's a relatively high, you know, high velocity sort of a movement, correct? So all these different adaptations require a different programming consideration, which any buff guy at the gym won't be able to tell you. Correct? So again, now it comes down to sometimes I've even seen people disrespecting disrespecting floor trainers at a gym. You know, they'll go like, oh, but look at that guy. You know, he's not even fit. But he has the knowledge to help you out. You know, people go like, oh, this person looks so good. They know what they're talking about. Often, they don't. Yeah. <laughs> so that's just one, one of the many, many myths out there. You know, what's the most ridiculous myth you have heard? I've heard that um, you need to drink a lot of green smoothies in order to detox your body. I have, I am literally fed up of hearing this word detox because I'm like, if your kidney and your liver is working fine, there's no need for you to do a detox, right? Your body is great at doing that by itself. So so yeah, that's one thing that uh, I absolutely hate hearing and I'm hearing more and more as the days go on. (laughs) You know, yeah, only when I got to the gym, when I actually started going to the gym, I realized how ridiculous some of the opinions we hear are. Yeah. And uh, only when a person who is actually certified tells us that, you know, what you're hearing is bullshit and this is what you should do because that's science and explains that. Mm -hmm. That's actually how it opens. It's similar to the mental health thing, you know, Mm -hmm. which we often 
focus on it's like whenever like we talk a lot about mental health we talk also talk a lot about youth mental health so what we say that a lot of times a pe- people who are actually going through some mental disorders think that it's okay to take advice from their friends mm. and not talk to certified personnel okay yeah. you know sometimes at least 1% the friends might give you good advice might and it will actually make your problem better but 99% of the times what happens is they give you something which is not relevant yeah. and you end up boosting your own problem so what we suggest to everyone is that if you have a mental health problem or if you think that you are having a constant you are having constant troubles please go and seek out a certified professional either it yeah. be mental health either it be fitness correct yeah. no so, absolutely yeah. i think when it comes to mental health uh, one thing that i definitely like to add on to what you said is understand that okay your friends can offer you moral support for sure but they are not qualified to handle your baggage exactly correct yeah. so their their advice their opinions are largely influenced by their own experiences in life so they are actually thinking from their point of view and not from your point of view so yeah that's very important to seek it a professional help their experiences it's about how they have seen and what they have focused on in their experiences it correct. matters and yeah. we personally ourselves say that we are not qualified and hence we have a team of psychologists on board and we just send them to the psychologists and yeah. they actually figure them out so yeah. that is pretty much a myth that needs to be busted like everything needs yeah. to be pretty much certified and you need to go to the knowledgeable person and yeah and also that. i feel like there is this um, you know this monetary issue that comes up where people are reluctant to spend money on these services because they go like you know for therapy who's going to pay all all that but it's really important like to be able to invest in yourself is the best investment you'll ever make whether it's physical fitness or mental health correct so you know, one warren buffet was once asked like what is the best investment you've made and then he said that there was this 20 dollar course that i bought of Dave Carnegie, which actually helped me improve my communication skills, and that is what helped me build the complete Berkshire Hathaway and made me the billion, the billionaire I am. So, you know, investment in yourself is the key to everything, and it is about money. Yeah, yeah. everything, starting from time to resources. Oh, yeah. And yeah, you know, everything. yeah, you mentioned this. You mentioned this monetary aspect. So mm-hmm. I just like to plug in this one thing. Like you mentioned the monetary aspect about. uh the therapy and everything so guys i just want to tell you that there's this brilliant organization called the emotional wellbeing helpline what they do is they actually like you have to you they are a helpline basically so you call them if you have any mental health issue or if you're going through something and they talk to you over the phone uh it's a completely free service right now we'll plug them down below it's really amazing and they are doing some amazing work so check them out That's yeah awesome so moving on to the moving on to the next question a lot of people don't know this but it is the truth like physiology is psychology and what do you think about how does the body affect the mind so if i were to break it down into very very simple terms right layman terms it's it's a given you look good you feel good it's as simple as that like you know i don't even have to say much about that but apart from this when you're fitter when you're healthier you're just less lethargic you're less groggy you're more active and you're more positive there is you know your body and your mind are so like tightly bound together it's it's i mean the more i i, I don't even have words to explain it it's <laughs> it's just a fact you know it it really is and a lot of people do not explore this mind body connection hmm so i think in fact if i were to give you like an example from you know exercising itself whenever if you guys have been to a gym and you're doing say squats okay and you're 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 going to really focus on getting the mind muscle connection you you guys must have heard of this yeah. correct so it's like when you're at a gym and your your mind is somewhere else you're distracted you're not going to get a good workout in correct it's only when you're actually laser focus and you're like oh i have to work this particular muscle i have to really feel it i have to feel the movement that's your connection and with every passing you know uh, what do you call it like session that you do this connect gets stronger you get so much better at it and it's like a practice that you consciously need to do not just in terms of exercising but you know overall in your life i feel like that's a very important connection that people need to establish 
that can only be done with practice over time yeah actually the nerve the human body builds actual builds actual nerves mm-hmm. which become stronger and stronger over repetition mm i see right okay. i don't know so, about this complete thing i have seen a lot of teenagers you know who are very lethargic mm too much of them and basically this podcast is a lot about teenagers so okay. i would want to ask you about this one question like a lot of people think that they are saving energy by not spending it mm. but actually it goes the other way around if you spend more energy you get get more energy like you spend some energy at the workout you gain more energy for the complete day mm-hmm. but if you not work out it you stay lethargic for the complete day so how do you have so what do you have to say about spending energy to get more energy okay so, uh, i think i absolutely agree with you uh, no matter how difficult your day has been no matter how stressed you are at the end of the day right after say work from home getting in that 20 to 30 minutes of a workout it absolutely charges you up right so apart from the endorphins you know apart from the endorphins the feel good hormone um it really gets your mind up and running now for example if you go to the gym you're doing a leg day right your central nervous system is very active after that and that's why they say you know don't don't train too heavy too late at night because it it just you can't fall asleep after that so definitely i think if you are feeling lethargic throughout the day you don't have to spend an hour at the gym two hours at the gym you can do a 15 minute session in your room but it's really going to give you that it's just going to open up your mind you know the, the mind that's been so tired throughout the day it just refreshes it wow uh, you know so like uh, also i wanted to ask you uh, is there any specific time that you need to work out like is when should one work out is it morning is it evening is it afternoon when is there a specific time no whenever convenient so the, you will read a lot of these articles on google i've actually had arguments with people you know so once i had put up this story um where someone actually asked me a question saying are morning workouts better than evening workouts and i said no it's you know whenever you can work out just adhere to it just the point is you get your workout done uh, and somebody came into my dms and uh, told me hey you know you should do a simple google search because you're spreading misinformation and uh, i was like you know what dude if google had all the answers every time we felt sick we would all actually have symptoms of cancer <laughs> so google is not is not the, the source of information that you should be going to correct so 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 there is no no such thing at all there have been quite a few studies done in which uh, you know participants were trained in the morning they were trained in the evening in terms of body composition in terms of progress there is no difference so work out whenever you want to just get the workout done and you know google is just a search engine it is not a website and it basically just searches shit out of any website yeah anything seriously? and you know i can literally upload anything on quora wikipedia and <laughs> i feel this can be exactly that is how everything becomes a problem because google is not the way you get the information google is the sorry google is not the source from which you get the information google is the way you reach the source correct and yeah very well said very wrong <laughs> Yeah I think you know it, I mean if you think about it if Google really had all the answers there would be no professions in this world exactly. doctors would be sitting exactly. at home they'd be like okay why don't you just figure out how to get your own medicine as well right <laughs> <laughs> that's what people need to realize um yeah and you know like a very important part of the whole fitness journey is you know our diet so you know about diet mm. how much does food affect not only your body but also your mind food is so important i cannot even express it in words because food ha- has a direct correlation with how you feel if today i tell you as a coach that maybe i t- i take you know a consultation from you and i'm like hey what are your favorite foods and you tell me oh i love burger i love fries i love cake and i'll just be like okay so tomorrow onwards you're not going to have any of that that's it your there itself you know you're you're like what you're doomed correct and i feel like when you restrict certain food groups you crave them all the more and not being able to eat what your heart desires is it just puts you in a very cranky mood mm-hmm. and this is what happens with chronic dieters they restrict too much for too long and then end up binge eating on a day and they completely lose control and that makes them spiral into feelings of guilt which is not a healthy mindset at all right so you start developing this this very unhealthy mindset where you're like these are good foods these are bad foods correct 
people need to stop seeing food as um, for its you know absolute caloric content it's not just oh calories in and then i have to burn this much to lose weight see food as fuel stop seeing it as the demon so when you disregard the nutrients that it provides to nourish your body then what are you even doing you've lost the whole reasoning about for why you're eating food in the first place so obviously you might want to eat mcdonald's once in a while correct but now it comes down to how it makes you feel say you're craving it you eat a burger you feel good but let's say you're craving something you've not eaten it in months and then suddenly you're ordering a large meal with mcflurry on the side you eat all of that and you feel good in that moment but half an hour later that's it you're out <laughs> you know you're tired you're sluggish all day correct so of course eating these foods once in a while is good eat them but really be able to ask yourself what is it on this menu that i really want i'm craving the burger chalo i'll pick up the burger maybe i i won't do with the fries and all maybe my friends are getting fries i'll just pick up two from them being able to really have that self control and understanding about what you really want and what you don't want or don't need is going to be very crucial so i personally believe that everyone needs to follow the 80 20 rule uh, so even at team iraqi you know we never give our clients a fixed diet plan because again in india i feel like there's so much diversity in our culture in our cuisines even in maharashtra i feel like if you're in dif- if different parts of maharashtra have such different cuisines there's it's impossible for me as a coach to tell you acha eat poha in the morning eat this in the afternoon it's not going to happen yeah. correct so being able to follow this flexible dieting in which say 80% of the time you are eating whatever is made at home as long as you're tracking it and then that 20% you know say say something like one piece of chocolate makes you happy every day i personally love dark chocolate so i have one piece every single day it doesn't throw me off my game it helps me curb my cravings so what's wrong with that correct yeah. so rather than rather than sort of restricting myself throughout the week and then eating like a large chocolate cake with ice cream on the weekend i'd rather do it in moderation every single day it keeps me happier and keeps me lets me adhere to my sort of goal more in the long run so it is all about keeping yourself satisfied with yes diet. absolutely yeah but you know there is this term which is called psychological reactance it is like if you are going to go and wash the dishes Mm-hmm. with your intent and if your brother or your sister tells you like go and wash the dishes then you you refuse you go like right, right. even if it was my intent you are you, who the fuck are you <laughs> yeah why did you speak up yeah exactly and that is actually psychologically proven it is called psychological reactance okay. like if someone else tells you about to do so, do a certain thing then you don't do it Mm, and that is why if your fitness coach tells you to not eat it you'll crave to eat it more yeah and you will disobey them and you will eat it <laughs> exactly and then you will end up blaming the fitness coaches which is very wrong <laughs> <laughs> okay amazing amazing so basically after this one important thing which comes up is the mental diet mm-hmm. what kind of information do you consume what kind of good information bad information there is no there is no good or bad as such but what makes you happy gives you a quick dopamine shot in the short run but you know makes you sadder in the long run so mm-hmm. what do you have to say about consuming information at a good level okay so i think when it comes to fitness i can only speak about this particular industry because it's my niche but i think uh, when you're if you have that curiosity right it's a good thing that's a very very good thing always ask questions that's what i say to everyone but don't go looking for answers that you want to hear okay say you want to start a fitness journey you want to lose a certain amount of weight don't type in how to lose 5 kg in one month i'll tell you why because articles will pop up for sure there, there will be a full 10 step process on how to lose this weight and you'll think you know what i've i've got that pot of gold that's it i'm going to achieve my goals don't go about doing that start understanding really take that effort to understand what is nutrition what are macronutrients what are micronutrients correct how do i sort of fuel my body in the indian diet what is it that gives me carbs fat protein how should i sort of structure my meals that understanding is going to go a, a much longer way how do i track my meals right when it comes to exercising what are the different types of exercises that are out there how does a beginner sort of ease their way into fitness things like this are going to help you more than you know a quick fix don't look for quick fixes understand like really take that effort and understand the science behind it now in order to do this where do you go 
I would say a hundred percent go to journals. Okay, there are a lot of research research papers out there. In the fitness industry, right? Anecdotal evidences don't count. Like if somebody says to you, "I did this and it worked for me," that does not prove that what they did was correct. That can be a good hypothesis for a research that can be done in the future. But in mm-hmm. this industry, there have there are subject matter experts. There are lots of re, you know research papers that are. posted on all sorts of subjects you have everything ranging from nutrition to to you know sports even sports within within sports also there are a lot of articles so in order to read these research papers a few that i would recommend would be say pubmed pubmed is very very popular and the second is the journal of strength and conditioning research these are just two of them but if you go out there and just sort of type in okay so google this google best journals best research journals for fitness best research journals for sports nutrition and you'll find a list out there go into that read not just one paper read three four papers on the same subject so you get like an all rounded view correct so a lot of people what they do is they have a bias based on what they've heard from somebody who maybe they trust correct maybe they they think that oh let me give you an example let's see for example this whole um, morning workouts are better than evening workouts okay they have this bias in their head so what happens is sometimes when people people try to start a discussion with me in my instagram dms i'll be like hey could you you know quote your sources the reason for this is not to challenge somebody and be like oh do you even have sources to prove it the point is if you have sources that display a conflict of interest i would love to read them and understand this other point of view right so in fitness people have a lot of ego ego can't hold in a place where we are all you know we hum sab science ke side se it's not about our personal biases our personal egos so really go into it with a very neutral mindset and read yeah. a lot of papers before you sort of come to a conclusion that okay maybe this is how things work and in order to do that go ahead and search for meta analysis okay that is usually a it's like a study done of all the literature in a particular subject and then they have this graph which which sort of you know lists down all the results of all these individual papers and then there's like a median line that comes out to show which side majority of the research is favoring so that also gives you a good insight so definitely go ahead read a lot of journals there's a lot of brilliant stuff out there please don't only look at the first entry you see on google <laughs> yeah you know because there's this movie which i watched like two weeks ago which is called social dilemma it is available on netflix if if you have it, yeah. you must be having an idea about how google shows you what you want to see yeah the machine learning of google is like too vast too good they have so much data about you that they can predict anything that you're going to be doing at any moment because they have literally wired your brain to actually get back to google or get back to any kind of social media account for the quick dopamine shot that you need yeah which mm-hmm. is pretty much wrong because you know once you open <laughs> once you open instagram you just slide it once you just refresh and you get to see something new exactly and yeah. being animals we become very happy or we get a dopamine shot the very moment we see we see something new exactly yeah and because social media has so much to show you get wired to hook onto it which yep. becomes the big problem of the day i so, agree i feel actually i myself when i saw that documentary it it just made it was like the sort of enlightenment you know this self awareness that came up because i realized social media had taken such a toll on me that if i'm bored i'm just picking up my phone i open instagram and i'm refreshing 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 even if there's nothing new to see that does nothing i'm getting out of it my screen time is going on increasing at night before i sleep i used to scroll on my phone for 1 2 hours and because of that you know it, you obviously can't sleep immediately after that to fall asleep it would take me another hour so in this time from like 10 pm to 2 am i was getting nothing done so what i really liked about the documentary is when they said that if you're not paying for a product you are the product and the product that just blew my mind man pretty amazing you know there is this yeah. book which i am reading currently hyper focus it okay. talks about yeah it is about it is written by chris by and it talks a lot about you know why you open up your mobile screen in a long elevator or or it basically talks about how okay. your brain functions when you are not consciously controlling it and how can you get mm. it consciously to control yourself and you know make it everything better there is this 
concept that he has written about which is called the autopilot mode hmm. which is how you do habits okay like how you actually you know execute habits you don't you do not have to consciously think about how you walk it just happens on a completely autopilot hmm. mode and that is pretty Correct. cool you it, this book is a pretty much must read hyper focus by chris by we'll pick it up this weekend man i just actually finished um, the 5 am club Oh, so popular. Really, really, I don't know why I took so long to read it. Yeah. <laughs> so finally, I picked it up last week and finished it in a week. And that book has really, you know, changed yeah. my mindset so much. Like when you spoke about habits, instantly, you know, that that model that they speak about in the book came came to my mind. So how you know there's like I personally before I read this book, I've seen everywhere that it takes twenty one days for you to make a habit. Mm-hmm. But in this book, they say that it takes sixty six days, because those it's broken down into three phases. but in you know the first 22 days you're destroying your old habits yeah. then in the next 22 days you're sort of installing it into your body and then the last 22 days is when it really starts becoming a routine and yeah. that really changed my mindset because even for me i used to think hey you know i'll do it for 3 weeks and it'll become a lifestyle for life mm-hmm. but that isn't true so some really good insights in that book as well pretty amazing yeah. Yeah. Well, you know so what are your top 3 books my top 3 books you know i have i have like stopped reading for so long it's only this saturday that i went ahead and i picked up some books and i was like you know i have to start this hobby again so obviously the two that i've read in this week have been the 5am club and ikigai so these oh. two i've read most recently so unfortunately i only have these two right now but also i read shoe dog uh, about a month back by phil yeah. knight so yeah. i think that that one's also a very sort of inspirational book uh, yeah. you know i honestly when when i read that book i I was really shocked to hear of, you know, the things that he's gone through to create Nike and look at where it is today. So definitely, if you're looking for inspiration, these three books are unfortunately the only three that I have read recently. So, but I loved all of them. So yeah, go ahead and read those. Amazing, and you know, you cannot hate a book. That is the good part of the story. You just love them, and it is it is difficult to set the habit of reading a book. But once you have done it, it. it exposes you to new information at such Absolutely. a good rate that social media can never reach to that level i agree 100% but i feel like you know when it comes to book reading i have seen it's almost as if there are two types of people people who go like i cannot read books i just i can't and then some people who are like oh i'm a bookworm i don't know i feel like there are a lot of people who have been like you know maybe you should go ahead and read this book it's going to change your life and they're like yeah like can't i just can't stay focused there is oh, there is no middle ground <laughs> yeah that's what <laughs> <laughs> oh, but i feel like they're, they're missing out on so much yaar yeah. if if you're someone who who doesn't read please just try it just give it a shot yeah, yeah. okay so this was great talking mm-hmm. with you shall we great in great there mm-hmm. is this one question that i would you know i like to ask you and this is one standard question that we ask to every guest that we have Okay. Which is, what is the one message that you would like to give to me? Okay, um, I think one of the most important messages that I I want to tell you guys is, you have everything you need to make a difference in your life, and that could be in any field. It could be your career. It could be your health. It could be anything. It's only you who has to stop making excuses and start taking action. I want you all to know that you should never underestimate the power of a little bit of effort taken consistently every single day. So there is this one um, I, I I don't want to say quote but something that I read online recently only that um, that I would like to share with you guys. They said that if you take 1.00 and you multiply that to the power of 365 you're left with 1.00 correct which means that if you don't do anything different one year from now you'll still be the same but if you take 1.01 and you take that to the power of 365 that gives you 37.78 which just goes to say that the difference in your mind and your body one year from now is going to be huge even if you just put in 1% of effort every single day to be better than you were yesterday so your competition is only with you guys that's all i want you to believe and please believe in yourselves you've got everything you don't need money to make it big you just need discipline you just need a plan and you just need the grit to work on it every single day amazing this was great connecting yeah. with you 
um everyone yeah, yeah you yeah follow thank you so much for tuning into the season 2 yeah Her, i had a great time with you guys Maraki, this was really great talking to you you know pretty amazing i felt amazing it was a very much depressing talk you know after the complete day of study <laughs> and <laughs> you want to follow team meraki and check out her application right is the application up here yeah actually if anyone's interested in coaching then please drop us an email it's help at teammeraki.com with a single m there's no double m in there or obviously reach out to me on instagram my instagram handle is shami sansari that's it simple as that and i would love to help you out amazing thank you okay, so we we'll, we'll mention those down down below and thank you awesome. so much for tuning into the season 2 and you. yeah hope you're served thank you <laughs>